Hi everyone, I thought it was about time I put another uh, YouTube up. As you know I have quite a few phones from around the world. I put some of these up on Flickr and also YouTube. Today I received this phone and I'm very pleased as well. I've stripped it, well I haven't stripped it right down but I've removed most of the bits to show you exactly what is inside. Now we're normally familiar with the uh, telephone 706 which was introduced uh, during the late 50s. You often see this particular phone on old films. Um, it's it's um, quite rugged and was also manufactured by other makers for private systems. Now we might have a visitor of a pussycat. I'm having a bit of a job here, it's feeding time. Now this model is known as an N1900. It's A9. It's manufactured by Ericsson's who were one if not the main inventor if you like of the 706 which was a post office uh, phone or post office GPO. It came out more or less the same time as I joined the firm many years ago. So I saw the ends of the heavy Bakelite the 332s and before that the 232s and um, there's a new era of this type of phone. And I've got over some of the things. Excuse my hands plop, plonking in things. You'll often see at the back the name Ericsson's Telephones Limited. And once again, certain films, some James Bond films, I tend to look at the things which other people don't look at. Below the theme, I look at, at phones, electrical bits, and say to myself, well, is that correct for that one? A lot of cases are. But I digress. It's um, interesting because, let's have a look. It's basically the same as a 706. But there are some slight differences. Um, for a start, the dial has a silvered finger plate. I believe the later ones of this particular model, they were a coloured plastics. Um, you've got the front of the dial there. And chevrons, which are these things, like little arrow points in it. It's a lovely smooth dial. It's, I haven't looked at the dial, but I would say it would be a trigger dial, which is the standard type of dial used uh, by the GPO, uh, BT, uh, call them what you like. Um, the base is of the Mark I 706. The standard is the same base, but I will find the number. This was actually covered up. The number is N one nine O O A nine. Everything, as far as I can make out, is exactly correct. This phone was uh, late fifties, so we're going back a few years. It's been rewired with a modular plug. You've got your connections under there. I won't go through that, but um, I could I could do, but uh, I won't for this uh, video. You'll notice down there, I pointed out, we've got a slot. Now that slot 
is for a regulator. Now this model did in fact use a regulator. Now the same company, Ericsson's and Plessy, they called their phone an Etel phone. And they might get another pussy cat. Now I'll go over and just turn the water on. My cats always want to be in the video. They've jumped up and having a drink from the tap. Anyhow, this is um, made by Ericsson's and Plessy. It was called an Etelophone. Etelophone. I have in fact got another phone upstairs which um, is called an Ethel phone which is a different shape altogether. We go over some of the parts, a lot of you would know what the parts are. And this would correspond to a BT706. There's your capacitor which allows the ringing which is AC to pass through it. To ring the bell. The bell's underneath. I won't take the dial off, but you can see the two coils of the bell. And you've got the two gongs, which are a different number on either. One is slightly higher toned than the other. The idea, I believe, was to make it more hearing. Hearable? Is that a good word? Something like that. Anyhow, it's got two, the gongs were two different tones that were set. Um, now, while I talk about regulator, when I was in B, um, well, the GPO it was in my day, um, it was a known fact that people would ring up ENG, which, which was the engineering department. Uh, we had, en in those days, engineers and they would send out engineers to the subscribers' premises and repair the phone or check the line, anything like that. They were getting calls come in saying their phone was actually a light. And particularly noticeable if it was one with a red case this is actually a two-tone grey. And why they were ringing up, didn't know, but let me stretch across and get it, they have a regulator. Now, I was lucky because this phone has one of the original regulators. And the, reg the it's got a glass lamp or a thermistor. It's got one filament centre tapped made by Hivac, this was the, the company that made the actual tubes, and they would glow. And it did look like the phone was on f fire. I've heard horrible things where people were told, oh, drop your phone in a bucket of water, which was completely ridiculous. But they were the things that they used to do. Um, so what happened, at that time, or shortly after that time, this was in fact painted black and you couldn't see the filament, which it is, glowing. So that overcome that. Now when we talk about the regulator, at the back, you can put it in either way. If that is put into the, the part here, it will be non-active, it's not used, it's just shorting out. But to have the regulator working properly, you'd put it in the other way and all these pins would in fact be used. And the idea of this was to equalise out long and short lines. So if someone was living next door to the exchange or central office, the sound volume would be exactly the same as someone living on the edge of the exchange area. And uh, it did in fact work. Now don't look too careful at the button. This 
this phone has a button called a transfer. It possibly enabled a call to be moved to another phone within the office because these will have been used for uh, mainly internal work and private wires, hence it has got a regulator. The ones made for radio rentals appear to not have the regulator. That part was um, virtually short, shorted out. It didn't need, well, they didn't need it. But this one has got the regulator. The capacitor is rather interesting because these were made to fit in the, uh, the GPO version and I think this one might have been a GPO version but where it had GPO at the end of it, it was rubbed out and this, this is a feature that some, some of these have but you remember the firms that made these made GPO phones as well there's several makers and Plessy and Ericsson's were just one of the actual makers. Now leaving the telephone part we go on to the handset. Now it's interesting because the 706 type of receiver known as a rocking armature receiver is what is used here. They've in fact used the same one. It has not got a GPO or anything like that on it. As far as I know, this would have been the original, although, funnily enough, it probably wasn't the original. I've just noticed the date code, 78 stroke 1, so that could have well been changed. Now we come to the transmitter or microphone and we have the same type of microphone as would have been fitted in the uh, 332, 232s, the old uh, Bakelite phones. The 706 itself did have a redesigned transmitter. I am assuming this would be the original. I'm going to have a look. Can't really tell. It's got a number there. Diagram number. There's certainly nothing on it. I'm interested in all these things because um, this, as far as I can tell, is a genuine Etelophone. Etelophone. Um, is genuine. They do turn up. Um, I like to pick up the unusual things, particularly appertaining to the 706. I'm actually looking out for an automatic electric uh, type of um, 706. I'm still looking. One may, may turn up on eBay. Anyhow, let's have a quick look at the diagram. Most important is the circuit diagram. And here we have the circuit diagram. I'll keep it on, on there a couple of minutes so that you can have a look at it. And it shows, I can't use my fingers because I'm holding the phone and my camera so it's a bit awkward. But on the left hand side you can see a circle there which represents the a thermistor on there and that's that part which I showed um, unplug it and it's the regulator so this phone was used with a regulator there's no other numbers on there the number is the one that was on the at least I don't think there's a number on there up there. There may be a number there actually. Oh, it's a note, I think. Note one. There's your dial or the connections. All your connections there are what you would need to uh, uh, wire this up. And it is quite good. They all vary slightly. 
but that is the one for this particular phone. The numbers appear on the outside ring. You don't have any exchange names as this was used as I say for a private system which just went under numbers. And there's your numbers. Um, I understand there would have probably been a, a carrying strap between these two points. But this is an earlier uh, phone of the Atom phone, so it, it may have not had one. But nevertheless, it's in very, very good condition. I don't know where it's been stored. It's been stored somewhere where it hasn't been used. But it's in beautiful condition. I think I've covered all. I hope I have. Go over some of the springs. We have a spring in there. These spring sets, which I'm operate is coming up. See the spring sets moving as, as I press the the cradle uh, spring as you press it they come in. Uh, I understand that they were coated with either, either gold or platinum contacts because these were said to be uh, tropicalized because they were often sent to other countries at the time. I think I mentioned it, but the base itself is of the Mark I type. It's the plastic base, or it's a kind of plastic, non-printed circuit. So it's wired up. This is quite neatly wired, actually. It's hard wired. And it's quite nice. Um, yes, I think I've covered it. Now, if anyone's got any questions they would like on this, please shout. I'll try and give an answer. I've got to give feedback to the gentleman who supplied this, and I'm well pleased. If he looks on it on the YouTube, he'll probably recognise it, particularly with the that label which um, would have been used by one of the non-GPO firms. Another thing about it, you've got a dust thing around there. You don't normally get that on the GPO 706s. It's probably all part to do with the uh, the tropicalisation. Anyway, I think I've said all I should say about this. Once again, many thanks for watching. Any comments please make. Remember I've put up quite a few phones plus all the other bits I do, the plants, etc. And some of them are in or on Flickr. It's just a, the time it takes to actually do it and get them on there. So once again, thank you. I have had no luck changing the subject completely with my other little um, camera, the Toshiba job. The results were ghastly, so I, I deleted the whole, the whole video. I know it got out, I know three people looked at it. Um, but I said, no, that's horrible. It may be due to a dodgy camera, it may be due to the fact I don't know how to use it, or it might be due to the fact the memory card was a cheapo. I just don't know. So I shall probably have to get a proper memory card and have another go. Because I feel it should work, but at the moment I just don't know. Anyhow, once again, I'm waffling on. I don't know whether to put this on telephones of the world or Peter's ramblings. It's really a mixture of both. I know I do like the sound of my own voice. So once again, I'll try and get away this time. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please comment. And I'll get back with another video.
before long. Thank you.